Hello guys, how are you doing today? Uh, today I'm going to be solving a problem that we uh, mentioned during the last time. During the last time we were solving uh, centroids. And I'm going to show you exactly what we did in the previous video. So in the previous video we show we solved this centroid. And we said this is a composite figure and then we have to calculate the center of the figure. That was a previous problem that we solved with this figure. And we also mentioned, oh, if you're seeing, you have seen all, all those overpasses uh, that they build in the highways, and this is a fairly common type of uh, structure, fairly common type of section. So now we're going to work with the same one, but we're going to calculate the moment of inertia with respect to an axis that passes through the centroid. Moment of inertia with respect to an axis. passing through centroid. Centroid, of course, of the composite figure. That's what we're going to do. In other words, I'm going to put an axis here through the centroid, and I'm going to call that axis x, I don't know. And the first thing that you have to do is remember what is the formula for a uh, moment of inertia of composite figure, Steiner theorem, parallel axis theorem. And then you say that moment of inertia with respect to any axis, any arbitrary axis, is going to be the summation of the individual centroidal moment of inertia of each one of the figures. We call this one, two, three, and four last time, plus the summation of the area of each one of the figures times a distance square and that distance square is no other thing but the distance between the centroid of each one of the individual figures and the center of the composite figure for example for figure one the center of figure one is here and the center of the composite figure or the axis that we ha have to transport that to is here so the distance is going to be from here to here for figure 2, the centroid is here, uh, so the distance that we're looking is the distance from here to here. For figure 4, same thing, the, the centroid should be somewhere here for figure 4, so the distance is here, and for figure, for figure 4, yeah, for figure 3, should be this distance from here to here. Be aware that the, when, you, when you work in the x direction, that distance has to be measured in the y direction. And that has to do with that formula, remember the integral of y squared dA. That's exactly the, the part that uh, is related to that formula. So let's start working with the previous table for the previous problem that we did. And remember, this is what we did before. So uh, please go and get what you did before with this table, because what we are going to do now is just complete that table and add more columns to that table. This particular problem uh, we are solving is only with respect to the x-axis. So, so I'm gonna this column. If it's with respect to the x-axis, I won't need it. But I need a and I need y because I have here a times y squared. So the additional column that I have to ask is uh, that I have to add to this uh, part is. I sub zero x for each one of the figures. And I'm gonna add also another column, which is gonna be this weekly thing. I say that you need y because it's here, but this is not the same y. This is the y sub i weekly, I don't know how you wanna call it. And then I'm going to put here a, which is that a, multiplied by this square. That's what we are doing there, exactly that. So let's work that out. Because this is live, I don't edit my videos. So I'm going to just uh, do something that I it occurred to me right now for the sake of uh, being more comfortable work while working with this. So I'm going to just put a piece of tape here so I can keep these pages together. 
and don't keep bothering me. There you go. Now let's continue this uh, thing here. Figure one. Figure one is this figure here. Moment of inertia for figure one. If you go to the table that you have in most of the books, in the back of most of the books, a moment of inertia with respect to the centroid is 112 bh cube in the x direction. That's what we are going to do. So it's going to be bh cube divided by 12 and bh cube divided by 12. The b base is this one. Remember, this is 110 from the previous problem. And you can see it here 20 plus 20 plus 30 plus 20 plus 20. So 110. 110 times h cube h is this distance this distance is five centimeters five to the third divided by 12 that is equal to one thousand you don't have to do this every time that you do it I just do it like that so you can go back and review where the distances come from you can do it in the calculator so one one four five point eighty three periodic what you should do is copy here the units centimeters to the fourth this will be in centimeters and this will be also centimeters to the fourth now we have that now this distance in y that distance in y once again is the distance measure and this is important I want you to repeat this so many times as many times as you need it that distance is the distance between the centroid of the individual figure, in this case figure one, and the centroid of the composite figure or the axis that you are transporting that to. In other words, individual figure, centroid is here, composite figure, centroid is here. This is five, so the distance from the top is uh, 2.5. This is 26.94 and then you have to find this distance listen you have to start looking at the figure going crazy trying to understand how that thing works but if you have this previously it's so easy because look what is this y this y was the distance measured from the base in the original problem remember we put our axis of reference for the centroid here so everything was measured with respect to that point that means that this 42.5 was the distance from here to there and 26.94 is the distance from this axis also to the centroid so the only thing that I have to do here is subtract 42.5 minus 26.94 and that's going to be 15.56 centimeters now I get this distance and I square it on my calculator calculator 15.56 square times the area which is 550 and that's going to be equal to 133,162.48 a lot of people uh, convert this into meters square and I don't like to do that because you lose a lot of decimals when you convert that because remember how to convert from uh, by the way remember how to convert from square centimeters centimeters to the fourth to meters to the fourth if you are converting I'm gonna do it at the end but remember the units are to the fourth so the conversion value has to be also the conversion factor elevated to the fourth now let's go to figure two figure two is this figure here we have the area previously now this is a triangle if you go to the triangle be very careful because this triangle here with respect to uh, the x-axis x-axis passes through the centroid so this is the centroidal moment of inertia is 136 bh cube but if you have to refer it to the base for some reason be very careful because I demonstrated somewhere else so the one that we are uh, considering is 1 over 36 bh cube 1 over 36 bh cube 1 over 36 bh cube is 1 over 36 b is 20 and h cube is h cube is uh, 40 to the third and that value is that value is in my calculations previous calculations 
555.5 periodic. Now, what is this y wiggly y or y sub i or whatever you want to call it? That is the distance between the axis that I'm looking for for the rest uh, transporting the individual moment of inertia or the centroidal of the composite figure and the centroid of the individual figure. This is the centroid of the individual figure. Once again, if you go here, once we go here, the distance was 26.6. So it's going to be 26.6 minus the new distance, or the distance from the, this is the distance from here to here, 26.6 minus the distance from here to the centroid, which is 26.9. That tells you that this is not a scale, basically, because this should be above the other one, but it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't have to be a scale. It will help if it's a scale. But it doesn't have to be. 26.66666 minus 26.94. That's 0 0.27. 0 0.27. minus 26.94. Yeah, 0 0.27. Depending on the decimals, it's going to be 0 0.27, 0 0.28. But it do, it's not going to affect it. Oh, by the way, this is negative, right? Oh my god, negative. Be careful. Negative. I don't care negative, positive. This is going to be a square here. So whenever you square this here, if it's positive or negative, consider this absolute value. And it's going to save a lot of time. So then you get this value here, square this value, and multiply by that area, and you get 30 point. 87. Remember, these decimals can change, but this value is so small that it's not going to affect anything whatsoever. So for figure 3, figure 3 is this one. It's exactly the same as figure 4. The distance is exactly the same as figure 4. The dimensions are exactly, at uh, figure 2, I mean, the dimensions are exactly the same. So this is going to be also exactly the same. And this is going to be also exactly the same. And this is going to be 30.87 also. That means that if you uh, have been working with this for a while, you could have combined these two figures in only one. And say, instead of having figure 2 and figure 3, oh, wait a second, I can have a figure that is like that. Because even for centroid, because it's going to be exactly the same thing, the same location, the same magnitude, everything is symmetric. So I could have done that, but I didn't do it. Now, for the fourth figure, this is another rectangle. It's going to be BH cubed divided by 12. And B is 30 times 40 to the third divided by 12. And that's 160,000 centimeters to the fourth. That wiggly line, that wiggly Y again, is the distance between the centroid of the figure 4 which is given by this distance, 20, and 26.94. So 20 minus 26.94, that's 6.94. And then here is going to be this 6.94 squared times 1,200, and that value will be 57,796.3. Now, what else do we have to do at this point? Well, at this point, we're almost done. At this point, the only thing that we have to do as the formula states here, summation of i sub 0 xi. So we have to do this summation plus summation of all of this. The summation of these values in this column is 232,257. And the summation of all the values in this column is 191,021. When you add these two, you get actually the moment of inertia with respect to that x-axis that passes through the centroid. And that's going to be 423,278. 
centimeters to the fourth. Now, if you have to convert this into meters to the fourth for any reason, remember centimeters to meters, we have to divide by 100. So I sub x should be 423,278, but centimeters to the fourth multiplied by one meter is 100 centimeters to the fourth. And that's what most of the people forget to do. Now this centimeters to the four with centimeters to the four get canceled out. And I sub x, if you want it in meters to the fourth, should be 42, no, four point, because this is cent this is 10 squared to the four is eight. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can say that is 4.23 times 10 to the negative three meters to the fourth. And that would be the moment of inertia with respect to the centroid of this composite section. Go again, go in detail. It might be a little bit of, I don't know, difference here between the numbers because I stopped doing the problem and I retake the problem again. But the result is correct. Uh, go back, check it, and if you have any comment, let me know. I hope that you enjoy watching this and see you next time.